Oh, well, that's not good. Oh, this time it was really bad. <laughs> uh, yes, I am sure that I want to quit. That was <coughs> horrifying. Whoops. All right. Here we go again. Monica's house was pretty close to town, so I make my way there instead of going home. I, I stop by the I stop by the grocery to pick up a few things as well as something to cook for breakfast in the morning. It occurs to me that I'll probably make that I'll probably be making cupcakes again this weekend, so I grab all the ingredients that I can remember. While I'm in the grocery store, I get an expected call from my mom about the movie I rented yesterday. I explained to her that it was related to a school club that I had joined. She was skeptical at first, but after I explained some more of the details, she, she sounded con she sounded content. She sounded content. I'm torn between being happy and I I'm torn between being happy I convinced her and angry that I lied. And to top it off, once I once again have to repress any stray thoughts about Yuri. After shaking away the feeling, I return my attention to shopping. Once I have everything, I make my way to the bus stop. I ride the bus I ride the bus to the stop close to my street and I walk the rest of the way home. <laughs> Come on! I try to unlock the door without putting down any of the things I bought. Click. Gotcha. I clumsily place all my bags on the kitchen table and begin going through them. After taking a few minutes to put everything away, I, sta I stand staring off into space. Maybe Monica was right. Maybe just being there for Sayori, the way I am now, is enough. Something about the way she said it was so reassuring. Almost like she knew. I disregard the paranoia and as I take his seat at the table. Maybe I should text her again, see if she wants to hang out or something. Period. 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 My plan falls apart immediately as I pull out my phone. New messages from Yuri. Huh? Yuri? Looks like I got a message from her about 30 minutes ago. I must not have felt it vibrate when I, when I was sh- My mouth goes dry as I open the message. What? Alright. Lights coming on! What the frick? The message contains a photo of what looks like a person's arm with cuts all over it. I hope it's just my imagination, but I swear that the first letter of my name is carved in there as well. Alright. What I see as I scroll down to hide the image... ...almost makes me sick. I was thinking of you. This, this can't be. The, ro the room starts to spin around me as, as the reality of it sets in. This can't be real. My legs feel weak as I stand up and quickly shuffle over to the sink. After dry heaving into the sink a few times and splashing some cold water on my face, I try to think clearly. What's happening? Why would she do that? All those cuts, th that letter. I dry heave again as I think about it. I can't let her keep doing this. They look deep. I'm tempted to pull up the photo again to check the severity of the wounds, but decide not to. But decide that my stomach couldn't handle it. <laughs> How can I stop her? This isn't something a text could clear up. God, I wish this was a nightmare. I continue to stand hunched over and pale as my nerves settle. I have to talk to her before she seriously hurts herself. I splash more water onto my face and try to clear my head. Monica pointed out where she lived. I could walk over there and talk to her. What if her parents are home? Hell, what if she even isn't even there? 
No, I have to do something. I can't just stand here. I take a, I take a deep breath and open the medicine cabinet. Just in case. <coughs> I down two painkillers and leave the bottle on the counter. My legs still feel wobbly and weak as I make my way to the front door. <coughs> I stand motionlessly. I stand motionless in front of it as I try to build up my confidence. I I can do this. <coughs> I can't do this. I don't begin to start formulating a plan until after I've been walking for a while. It might actually be easier if her parents are home. I'm gonna take a drink of water and this time not die. <laughs> All right, maybe I am dying. <laughs> it would keep her from doing or saying anything extreme. But what do you say to a person who cuts? It's obvious that this wasn't her first time, so there's no telling how long she's been doing it. At this point, it's probably a habit. Just talking to her won't do much. Maybe I can get her to go see a doctor, or try convincing her just how dangerous it is. My dread escalates as I, as I recall what I was thinking the other day. What if I was right? What if all these girls really do have a problem that could threaten their lives? I almost fall over as the idea causes my knee to buckle. Dang it. <coughs> the closer I get, the more nervous I am. To make matters worse, it occurs to me that I don't know exactly which house is hers. When Monica pointed out, she didn't really point, point, to a, point at a specific one. This, mixed with my fear of having to confront Yuri, almost makes me want to turn back. However, this option is quickly thrown off the table when I hear, hear a familiar voice. Hey! Huh? I turn around to see Natsuki not too far behind me. Nat Natsuki? Uh. uh. <laughs> Do you have to look so annoyed to see me? S sorry, I'm not annoyed. I, I just wasn't expecting to see you out here. That's all. It's alright if you don't want to talk to me. I wouldn't want to either after the way I, I acted in the club. I had honestly forgotten all about that exchange until now. I'm serious, Natsuki. I'm not annoyed to see you. As, as a matter of fact, I'm glad you're out here. Glad? Yeah, it's pretty boring walking by yourself, you know? <coughs> that and her being around might help take my mind off of Yuri. Are you sure? I don't see why not, after all. I put on my, on my brave face and begin my routine. You're not telling me that you'd leave a poor, defenseless damsel like me to brave the stress alone, are you? There's no way I could fight off any danger all by my lonesome. Well, I guess I don't have much of a choice. Monica would be super peeved if she found out I didn't protect you. I once again bow down in front of Natsuki. Thank you again, Sensei. You are truly an exceptional master. <laughs> well, of course I am! Successful. I stand straight and take a position next to her as she continues walking. So what brings you out here? I feel the temptation to bring up why she was upset in the club, but I decided it would be... It would probably... <laughs> I remember Sayori mentioning uh, uh, at some point that you live across the block from us. I'M ACTUALLY ON MY WAY TO YURI'S HOUSE! <coughs> Period. 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 I feel my heart drop as I hear her say this. Dang it, she's on her way to Yuri's too! I, 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 I see! Would you mind if I asked why? Oh, well, she, uh... She, she invited me over for dinner! Seeing this look on Natsuki's face fills me with anger, and I'm not sure why. I should be happy they're getting along, so why do I feel like this? Maybe her dad's out of town, or Yuri just wanted to take amends. I swallowed the anger before I began speaking again. 
<coughs> That's nice of her. I'm glad to see uh, uh, you two. Uh, I'm I'm glad to see the two of you are getting along. <laughs> getting along. Period. 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 Oh, you mean because of our argument in the club room? Yeah, I just saw that. Don't be dumb. You really think we'd stop being friends just because we didn't like each other's poems? It's not like it's not that. Well, not entirely. I just didn't know if you and her were good friends or not. Well, you figure it out all the time if you spent talk. If you spent t if. You well, you'd figure it out after all the time you spent talking to her. You'd know a thing or two. I feel my face go red as you say this, but I choose to ignore having that conversation with her with her right now. I I'm sorry that I jumped to conclusions like that. I should have known better since I only had the two of you for, for about a day. <sighs> it's all right. Sorry if what I said. Sorry, I said what I said. I shouldn't make my assumptions either. Although I'm guessing that you, that you're out here because you're going to her house too. I blush even more as my cover is blown. Uh, well, well, sorta. It's not. It's not like that though. I just wanted to make sure she was okay. You know, since she missed the club and all. I guess that's kind of true, but it doesn't help with this embarrassment. You know, you could have just texted her or something. Um. Uh, I... <laughs> Don't even try! I saw the two of you trading phones yesterday! Has Natsuki really been watching me like that? Is she jealous of me and Yuri? Period. 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 <laughs> I'm gonna guess that's... I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna guess yes. She probably is. Uh, yeah, we did, but... Oh. Hello. I have nothing left to say at this point. She knows too much. Jeez! Are you guys all like this? Uh, what do you mean? It's alright if- Ow! It's alright if you and Yuri are a thing now! Where are you getting so embarrassed? What? Where'd that come from? Wasn't she just jealous of us? Or am I just bad at figuring out girls? It's not exactly like that. Are you really just gonna keep making lame excuses? <coughs> Yuri is really nice and smart, you know? <laughs> not to mention the fact that she keeps packing mad heat upstairs. My face might as well be on fire at this point. In fact, I kind of wish it was. Uh, th that's... Oh, please! Oh, please, don't tell me you're not uh, macho enough to handle a little boob talk. <laughs> please, face, please catch on fire now. End my misery now. I'd much rather be the spirit of vengeance than Killian right now. I don't really think that macho-ness has anything to do with it. Well, if that's the case, you should be fine. Fine? You know your friend Sayori isn't lacking in that department either. <coughs> <coughs> I actually think it's why she keeps her blazer unbuttoned! God, if you're listening, I'm perfectly fine with being smited now. Come on, don't act like you didn't notice! Ow, I punched my desk again. That's not something th that I... Oh, and then there's Monica! <laughs> I have to make this stop. But she's more thigh <laughs> than anything! Though I'm sure someone like you probably knew that already! I've got it. I just hope it do this doesn't seem too mean. But she's forcing my hand a bit. I smile at Natsuki as I begin to speak. Oh, and what about you? <laughs> I don't believe you brought yourself up yet. <laughs> Trap card activated. Boobs are everything, you know! I know, I know. I was just trying to spare myself from any more of your discussion. <laughs> I bet! I'm serious. There are a ton of guys out there that are into body types like yours. Ah! Uh, how would you know that anyway? Ah, <coughs> uh, well. Gross! <coughs> hey! <laughs> I didn't even say anything. I can tell you were thinking of it! 
that that's not <laughs> entirely true. You sure do get worked up when girls call you gross. I finally found your weakness, Killian. <laughs> Alright, lights coming back on. What the What was that? I feel a wave of coldness spread across my body. Are you okay? Yeah. What just happened? It's, it's like I wasn't even here. I, I just I just felt a chill, that's all. The obvious shakiness in my voice is probably gonna encourage concern. You're a bad liar, you know So people keep telling me. But seriously, I'm I'm fine. Right <coughs> It seems my flashback nightmare didn't do much to help the conversation. That I just that I had to have been in some sort of weird deja vu, right? But it was so clear, like I was actually standing in my kitchen. I feel another chill as I recall Natsuki's blank face. Maybe I really am losing my mind. I try my best to convince myself that it was just my imagination as we continue towards Yuri's. We walk in silence for a while, which actually helps me rework my battle strategy. I won't have to worry about Yuri doing anything extreme so long as Natsuki is around. I can just ask to talk to her, talk to her in another room so that Natsuki doesn't know what it's about. <coughs> period. 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 Unless she already knows. This thought bothers me more than it should, so I tried shifting my focus instead. <coughs> I'm still not entirely sure what to, what to say, but hopefully it'll come to me as I go. The idea of winning... A conversation about a serious issue like this makes me want to punch myself. Of winging. I also hope that Natsuki doesn't decide to eavesdrop on another one of our conversations. If she actually is okay with me and Yuri being a thing, it maybe she, maybe she's over her jealousy. Though she could have just said what she what, what she did out of respect for, to Yuri. I struggle not to let out a sigh as I continue walking. How did I get myself into this? <coughs> Atsuki begins slow slowing down as we approach one of the houses Monica pointed in the direction of Deep breaths, Killian <coughs> You got this Myself my, my self hike proves totally ineffective As it dissipates the second we approach the entrance Natsuki being Natsuki proceeds to bang on the door Calm down Everything will work out Managed to keep my anxiety somewhat under control as I hear a knob click from the inside. Oh god. <coughs> Hello, Net. Period. 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 Kill it. Killian. I'm Haya. What are you doing here? She really doesn't want me to answer that. She really doesn't want me to answer that honestly in front of Natsuki, does she? I was just coming to check up on you. You know, since you weren't at the club and all. Oh, right. <laughs> Don't tell me there's trouble in paradise already! Natsuki! How about we go inside to talk? Right, sorry. Alright. Let's. Ow. Man, this looks exactly like my kitchen. Oh, yeah, I forgot you're playing Gary's mod. I thought you actually made it to the sand battle. Me and Natsuki proceed to follow Yuri into her kitchen. I noticed that Natsuki has been sneaking glances at me since we've entered the house. She's probably as confused as I am right now. Period. 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 Okay, maybe not that confused. Would either of you care for some tea? Sure, I'll take some! <coughs> Thanks, but I'm alright for now. As she goes to pour up the tea, Natsuki proceeds to make herself at home. She takes a seat at the table and relaxes like she owns the place. I wonder how many times she's been here. I once again feel an indescribable anger fester inside me. Maybe I can find some way to get her to talk about her home life while we're here. Completely opposite from Natsuki, though, is Yari. She looks so stiff that she might shatter if she bumps into something. 
Like it's her first time in this house and everything she touches is made of glass. I can't really blame her. It's not much better than I am. I grab her attention when she has handed Natsuki a cup of tea. Hey, Yuri, can I talk to you for a bit? Uh, of, of course. We can, we can talk privately in my room if you would like. Sure, that sounds good. I half expect Natsuki to make some kind of joke right now, but it seems that she's showing restraint. She's probably curious on how this will play out, too. <coughs> I follow you. Uh, Nets, uh, I follow Yuri as she leads me through her house. I'm not sure what this is, but there's something unsettling about being alone with her in a bedroom. Y Yuri. Uh, okay, didn't even get to finish my sentence. Or start my sentence. About what you sent me earlier. I'm so s sorry. I don't know what came over me. I just... I. And then she starts crying. That's nice. This is unexpected. It's okay if, if you think I'm a freak. You'd be right. I'm. Shut up! <coughs> but I. Yuri, I can't begin to understand what you must be feeling. But do not call yourself a freak. I swear you're. I swear to God you're not. I can't say that what you're doing is okay and. And you know that. But know that I'm here... But know that I'm here because I care about you and I don't want you to hurt yourself. DON'T for a single second think that I'm here to insult you. <coughs> Killian. You don't mean that. The breaks in her voice show that she must be trying to... Trying hard to hold back tears. Yuri, I've, old you, I've already told you this before. Ah, Jesus Christ! Alright. <clears throat> I step towards her and take her hand in mine. I would, I, would I would never say something insincere to you. I... I believe you. I take the rest of her sleeve and begin to pull it upwards towards her elbow. I have to brace myself as I look at the gashes on her arm. She's obviously been doing this for quite a while. At this point, it's going to be a habit. One that I won't be able to break very easily. Where do I even start? I'm so sorry about the picture. It was just... I was so happy after spending time with you. When I do this... It's... Period. 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 Like a rush, right? Yes. After I did it, I just couldn't help myself. I wasn't thinking straight. I, I just wanted you to see it. I'm so sorry. I know I need to comfort her, but my mind is scrambled at this point. She's basically wanted me to see... She basically wanted me to see her getting off. That thought alone is enough to make me dizzy. <coughs> Yuri, why why did you why do you do this? Is it because it's it's exhilarating or is there something else? It's it's hard to explain. Take your time, this is important to me. Alright. Period. 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 She takes a moment to gather her thoughts. The least I can do is be patient with her. Okay. <coughs> it's not just that. At least not anymore. I read about cut... I read about cutting once after a character in a book that I enjoyed using it as a type of coping mechanism. The first time I did it, it hurt a lot, and I never wanted to do it again. But then I did it again. That's when I felt the rush. After a while, I began doing it for different reasons as well. Sometimes it's like my head is full of noise. 
thoughts of thoughts coming from all directions and all I want is for the noise to stop. This is clearly painful for her to talk about. The cutting helps clear helps clear your head, right? Yes. Trying to digest all this information is near impossible. I feel the tears threatening my eyes as I try to comprehend what Yuri goes through. She pulls down her sleeves and proceeds to hide her arm behind her back. If you want to leave now, I understand. Yuri. I step towards her again, but this time it's for an embrace. I will never leave you. I feel a jolt go through my body as tears on my and tears on my face as I say this. Killian. Here we go. I release Yuri and use my sleeve to wipe my eyes. After all, that's what friends are for, right? I smile at her as I say this. I suppose so. You're darn right it is. And as friends, we have to look out for each other. Huh? Which is why, from this point on, I'm officially banning you from hurting yourself. But, Killian, I don't... No buts! All the bull goose loony, my word is final. As the bull goose loony, my word is final. I, I'll admit, I don't know much about the subject. But I know that I can't let it continue. <coughs> because as your friend, seeing you get hurt also hurts me. I'm sorry. Nope! That just won't do! Hold on, something skipped. What? From now on, if you ever feel the slightest urge to cut... Call me, text me, anything to take your mind off of it. I won't let you go through this alone. And if you ever feel like your head is full and ready to burst, just know that I'm around. I'd be more than happy to hear what's on your mind. No matter what, I'm always ready to listen to you. I continue smiling at her even though my own thoughts are more than a little fricked. I will help you, Yuri, whether you want me to or not. Killian. You're so nice to me. <laughs> well, I've all I always do strive to be a gentleman. My smile begins to feel a little less less unnatural at this point. I'm glad. Yuri steps forward and returns the hug I gave her earlier. I was a little scared she was gonna try and kiss me though. <laughs> I'm really glad that I have you as a friend. She ends the hug after a short while, and we just look at each other for a moment. My fear of a potential kiss does remind me of something I wanted to talk about. And Yuri, I'm sorry if I made this worse for you. Sorry? Well, yeah. When we spent time together, uh, when we spent time with each other yesterday, things may have moved a bit too fast. I'm sorry if that made it hard for you to think clearly. You don't have to apologize. It was partially my fault. It's just, it's just that she thinks about what she's going to say and begins to smile sadly. Killian. During lunchtime, I eat by myself. Did you know that? Yuri. It's a great time to find a quiet spot and do some reading. In fact, I always have some books with me. And, well, books are so full of amazing and inspiring people. People you want to fall in love with. With people you just know would make you really would make a really good friend. Cheerful people who always put a smile on your face. Or deep thinkers and problem solvers who discover the mysteries of life. It might sound silly, but when I met you, it was like y you were one of those people. You're nice to me and you made me feel important. Like the things I thought and said really mattered. You made me laugh and feel a confidence I haven't felt before. So when you got in so when you got so when you invited me over to show me something you thought I might enjoy, I got excited. And after we spent some time together, I felt like I j it felt like just it felt just like you were another character that I had fallen in love with. I just got so caught up that with I just got so caught up in what I was feeling I couldn't help myself. I don't think I've ever seen her talk so clearly for this long, even when we were discussing books. 
Yeah. She said it felt she was. She said it felt like she was in love with me. Dude, you're being so loud. Your game is being so freaking loud right now. But only because she saw me as someone from a book. Yuri, I'm sorry, but I'm not one of the characters from your books. That's blue as well? Okay, whatever. I know. I'm flesh and blood, and the care and concern I feel for you are real. Killian. But I'd be lying if I said that I wasn't caught up in the moment, too. Ever since yesterday, I sure have been out all over the place. I see. But I do know for certain that I enjoy spending time with you. Even if that's... Even if it's not as a couple. Now that being ha being by your side makes me really happy. Which is why I'm standing by what I said earlier about being there when you need me. And maybe once we get our feelings figured out, we can go from there. I... I don't like that. I would too, Yuri. Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna lay down as I do this. My mic, uh, my Wii microphone cord is kind of long. Okay. Stand silent for a while before I remember that we aren't the only ones here. Oh, we probably shouldn't keep Natsuki waiting too much longer. Oh no. I hope she isn't too mad. Huh? Guess we'll find out. <coughs> How far does the court reach? Far enough to do this. The walk, the walk back to the kitchen was a weird feeling, uh, ha has a weird feeling to it. It's not tense, but there's definitely something different. Natsuki is still seated at the table and appears to be watching something on her phone. I apologize for keeping you waiting so long, Natsuki. Oh, it's alright! It's more of ki- It's more of- Killian's. Fault anyways! Man, how am I so lucky to have met someone as kind as you? Obvious sarcasm is obvious. You're lucky that you've only seen my nice side. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Would you like to join us for dinner, Kill Killian? I appreciate the offer, but I should probably get bit. Get back on the I'm gonna go home soon. I see. And I will see you at the club tomorrow. Sounds good. I look forward to it. And it was nice to talk to you, Natsuki. I I hear her let out a noise I I'll take as a confirmation. Before I start to leave I mumble to Yuri. Don't forget what I said, alright? I won't. Thanks again, Killian. 
Once that has taken care of, I began making my way toward the door. I can hear Natsuki's voice as I turn the knob. What was that about? Exhaustion overcomes me the second that I am outside. Feels like all my energy has been totally sapped from my body. I should be happy, but still. Even though every molecule of my body is screaming at me to just pass out on the sidewalk, I instead begin my slow trek back home. Oh. I finally arrive at my house after what feels like an eternity. By this point, my exhaustion has been replaced with numbness. I pull the keys out of my pocket and slowly unlock the door. I don't bother taking my shoes off as I, shu uh, as I shuffle into my house. As I take a seat on the couch, the events from earlier continue playing on repeat in my head. I should be happy that I got Yurg to open up about her cutting. But can I really help her? Will I actually be able to change anything? The weight of my new responsibilities puts me deeper into, into the couch. What will I do when she does call or want to, wants to talk? I should have recommended that she see a doctor or at least helped her treat the wounds. I dig my fist into the couch as my mind highlights all the things I did wrong. Dang it. Then there's the fact that Sayori left early and lied about why. And me refusing Monica's invitation into her house for coffee. I stare out the window at the clouds to try and force my mind off things. I try and recall the feeling I had during my walk with Monica. Even with her strange behavior lately, that walk just seems so... Right. Like we were just two normal high school students walking home together. <coughs> Nothing extraordinary or special about us. I wonder if things will be awkward between us now. This thought kickstarts my brain into once again worrying about everything that has happened so far today. I just sit staring at the window, trying to make some sense of what all has happened. Here we go. Killian, he really does know something. He really could be like me. He knew about the weekend assignment even though we hadn't talked about it yet. I'm overflowing with joy at the thought of being with someone who is the same as me. But I'm also feeling something else. It's okay that he didn't come come in with me. He probably just had something to do. He ditched me for that depressed female dog. My skin crawls at the thought. That's not true. Even if he did go see her, it's only because he was concerned. Face it. Even though he's different, he still doesn't want me. Who he chooses with, to be with is fine. I should just be happy that I'm not alone anymore. Don't lie to yourself. I want him to be with me. I want him inside me! Oh god! <laughs> Even though I know this, the, this thought isn't mine, I still feel a tingling in between my thighs. See, I knew it. <laughs> oh God, no! I don't even care about that. Even if all we do is talk, 
My body betrays my thoughts as the tingling sensation grows stronger. God, this is just horrible. Why bother even lying about it? Everything I've done, I've done because I wanted to. I enjoy watching my friends die. It makes me feel so powerful. I am the god of this world. No one else matters. I feel tears threatening my eyes. I try to talk back, but nothing more than a little whimper comes out. I know how to fix this. He's bound to give up on her if she gets any worse. No, it won't work. But things are different this time. Surely he's only ignoring me to spare her worthless feelings. She's my friend. The tears roll down my face as I force myself to speak. Even if she isn't like me, I still care about her. Why do I even bother caring about such trash? You know how to fix this. You can't. Not again. Just a little bit won't hurt. Even if she only gets a little worse, Killian is sure to see her as a lost cause. I can comfort him before one of the other two cunts get a chance. I, I... I try to fight off the fog that is encasing my mind. No, I won't let... You know how to fix this. 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 I know how to fix this. I shouldn't be doing this. <coughs> this isn't right. Stop, my words do little to keep me from continuing. It's already at six? That's probably enough to make Killian give up on her. <coughs> I desperately try to convince myself that what I'm saying is true. But I keep on with what I'm doing. Just bump it up to eight. Nothing bad will happen if it's only eight. Increase trait depression to eight. Huh? I'm slightly relieved that my quest was denied. However, this relief is quickly overcome by anger. My access has only ever been denied when I've tried to change Killian. What's going on? No, it's it's Monica. Uh, no, no, dude, dude, are you serious? It just skipped over a poem. Oh, it went auto. No! Stop auto! Oh. Dang it! Oh! Ah! Oh. Crap! Oh, come on! Chromium is here. That's just great, isn't it? Oh, wow, this is just awesome.
me on the Internet Explorer. Screw off. I missed a poem because it was auto. Ugh. Dang it! Oh, okay. Maybe. Oh, I feel like that was so important. Oh, why didn't I save? Oh. Oh, why didn't I save? Do you have to restart the whole, like, the whole, like, not the whole game, but, like, the, like, the poem part now? Oh. I can pause the video and see what it says, whatever. I can once again feel tears rushing down my face. What's wrong with me? I lay my face in my hands and begin to cry ugly sobs. I was going to, again. I'm so sorry, Sayori, everybody. I let him down. He knew better than to trust me. My mind begins to go foggy as I'm overwhelmed with emotions. Sorrow, anger, guilt, jealousy, fear, regret, all swirling around like a hurricane of noise barreling through my mind. I feel like I'm gonna be sick, but I'm too fatigued to move. I shut my eyes and clench the sides of my head with my hands. This does not stop the thoughts and feelings from swirling around though. I try to scream, but no noise comes out. Hey, I have an idea. I have an idea. I'm gonna... <clears throat>
one. I try to scream, but no noise comes out. Right as I feel myself about to black out, I manage to focus on something. I truly do care about you. As I repeat the line over and over in my head, the noise begins to fade away. Soon all I can hear in my room is the heartbeat. Soon all I can hear in the room is my heartbeat. And that one line. Period, period, period. Period, 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 period. Period, 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 period. Period, period. He's right. I knew things could be different, yet I still tried to... My throat is dry and scratchy and my eyes feel sore and puffy. He was, smart enough, he was smart enough to trust a monster like me. I turned my head to its position on the desk and stare at the moon. Killian, I wish you were here. Period, period, period. The feeling of numbness is transferred from my body to my mind. As I began to take in the world around me, I realized it has grown dark. How long have, it, have I been sitting here? My eyes burn as I blink for what I imagine is the first time in a while. I don't feel glum as before, but I can say I, I'm Mr. Brightside either. Knowing about Yuri's cutting is a good thing. I have the potential to really help her now. Monica didn't seem too upset with about me leaving her once I mentioned spending the weekend with her. But then there's Sayori. <sighs> so just lie about it if I text her. I'll have to try and find a new way to bring it up in the morning. Assuming she even shows up. I'd feel bothered by this thought if it hadn't just completely completed a mental triathlon. My butt and back feel sore as I, as I stand up from the couch. I need some air. I look around for a while as I enter the front hall before I realize that I'm still wearing my shoes. This also means I'm still in my uniform, but I cease to care. It's not like anyone's gonna see me anyways. I make sure to accidentally bump into the door facing on my way out. I went to DDLC mods. No. There's like a website dedicated to mods. After walking the street a bit, I actually begin to feel to feel better. The air is cool and calm. The moonlight bounces off the sidewalk and street. Everything is peaceful, like I'm the only person in, in the world right now. I feel my philosophical side wanting to come out as I look up at the stars. All my problems are so small t com compared to what's out there. Stars are exploding and collapsing. Planets are getting destroyed in cataclysmic events. And I'm just some dude with a few girl problems. Period, period, period. 
<laughs> find myself laughing genuinely for the first time in what seems like forever. As I return my attention to the street, I feel a confident I feel a confidence that I haven't felt since Tuesday. I felt like I was a bit somewhere back then. I could, could do anything I wanted. But then again, I did have a bit of a god complex going. <laughs> but maybe I was right to feel that way. Something brought me back and gave me a second chance to make things right. Why send me back if I didn't have the power to change anything? If there really is some guardian angel looking out for my friends. Thank you. I whisper these words into the air with a smile on my face. What? Killian? That voice. It sounds like... Okay, Sayori. Oh, hey, Sayori. I didn't expect to see you out here. She looks kind of down. I'm guessing that Monica thing is still bothering her. I could say the same. What brings you out so late? Oh, I was just... Just getting some fresh air is all. <laughs> yes, we can chalk it up to another thing we have in common. Yeah. What? Uh, Doki Doki, a brand new day. I know. Alright, well, you just do over there. It hurts me to see her acting this way. <laughs> yes! I have to help her. Well, since we're both out here, would you like to walk together? No, no thanks. You looked at me like you didn't want to be bothered. I glance at the street and buildings around me. Well, it's a good thing, because there isn't anyone to bother me. I smile at Sayori, but she still looks upset. Are you sure? I'm sure that I'm sure. Plus, it always feels strange walking without you, you know? Period, period, period. And hey, it'll be a good substitute since we didn't get to walk home together for, from school today. Sorry about that. I'm really not getting through to her, but I can't give up. No harm, no foul. Besides that, I wouldn't be very chival chivalrous if I let my lady wander the streets at night alone. I'm hoping that my smile will be infectious, but it doesn't seem to look like I'm having that much luck. Alright. We begin walking together down the road. However, she isn't walking nearly as close to me as she was this morning. She needs to know nothing happened between me and Monica. Even if she doesn't believe me, I want to tell her. Hey, Killian. Yes, Aori? Why are you still in your uniform? Uh, well, I've been kind of busy today. I guess I just never got around to changing. <laughs> Is it because of Monica? Huh? I knew it, but I didn't expect her to just come out and say it like that. I grabbed Sayori's arm and stopped her from walking. It's okay if you were... If you were... 
She's really pretty and smart. You deserve to be happy. No, I don't. Killian. People who have let their friends hurt like the way I've let you hurt. Those people don't deserve happiness. What are you talking about? I know about your depression, Sayori. Why did I just say that? My... Yeah. I've known for a few days now. Though I didn't want to believe it at first. My oldest friend, my little ball of sunshine, suffering alone while I just sat in my room, ignoring the world around me. You know, y you knew when, when we got to the park? Yeah, that was the day that I found out. What the hell? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. But that's not important. I'll admit that I invited you to the park because I was worried about you. But I realized while we were there, it's really the best part of my life. I meant what I said that day about how you're the most important thing in the world to me. When you left the club without me today, I knew it was because you saw me with Monica. That's... I should have run after you, explained that there was nothing between this. Instead, I just told myself you'd be okay and went on. I'm a dang poor servant and an even worse friend. I smile through my words even though I feel like crumbling. I need to get this off my chest if I'm ever going to really help her. But I need to know, Sayori. Did you truly want something to happen between Monica and me? Of course I... I thought I did. But after I left, all I could think was the two of you. And it hurt. It felt like someone was stabbing me in the heart. It's funny though. I guess selfish people deserve to be punished. You're right. We do. But not you, Sayori. For as long as I've known you, you've been the most selfless, most caring person. But I tricked you into joining the literature club. I made you walk home with me. I made you buy me a snack when I knew I couldn't afford it. You know, Sayori, your memory must be slipping in your old age. Huh? If I recall correctly, I wasn't forced to do any of those things. In fact, I'm positively certain that I did that them because I wanted to. Not because I was tricked or felt bad. But because I enjoyed getting to spend time with you. Nothing makes me happier than being by your side or and you're seeing you smile after one of my horrible jokes. Listen, I can't claim to be very smart or that I know the first thing about depression. But I know for sure that you aren't silly, no matter how hard you want to believe you are. And if you don't want me to care about you, then you're straight out of luck. Because in my eyes, you're worth protecting, no matter the cost. Why do I feel this way? I want to be happy, but I feel so scared. I didn't get to read that. As long as she has time to finish, I pull her in here and wrap my arm.
songs around her. You scared that you like me more than I like you? I feel Sayori's arms around me as she begins to sob. Am I actually helping or just digging the hole deeper? This thought manages to bother me through my regained confidence. Sayori continues crying into my shoulder as I keep my arms firmly around her. I'd rather fight on Crying begins to die down into gentle sobs, but she doesn't release her grip on me. Are you scared that your hugs would feel cold? But you're so warm, and I'm scared of that too. Eh, I guess I'll try and make my hugs more room temperature from now on. Makes me so happy. My heart feels like it's gonna burst. You're so silly, Killian. Looks like you're finally rubbing off on me. As I begin to let up on the hug, she tightens her grip. Can we just. Period, period, period. Of course. We stand together in silence for a few minutes. I can feel her breathing on my neck and her rapid heartbeat against my chest. Do I... Do I love her? I regret thinking this as I feel my own heart start to speed up. When we were younger, I always loved her in a sisterly way. But now... Flirting with Natsuki and Monica was fun and lighthearted. And there was more lust and excitement than passion with Yuri. But this feels totally different. I noticed some warmth fading and I realized Sayori is releasing her grip. Sorry about crying on you. Sorry about see being a super awkward hugger. You weren't awkward. You weren't that awkward. Oh, please. It must be like hugging a crooked light pole. It's because of these arms, I bet. Sarah laughs as I contort my arms in various ways. Maybe I am really in love with her. There should be tension after what we just went through, but I couldn't be more at ease. We should probably start to head back now. It's getting really late. Yeah, I reckon you're correct. The VP of the Breakfast Club does need her beauty sleep after all. you feel the same as me right now? Is that why she can bounce back so fast? Hey, are you zoning out again? Nope, I'm ready to go when you are. As soon as we begin walking back, Sayori slowly closes the gap between us. I'm not sure if I'm the one who start started it, but I soon find myself holding hands with her. We approach her house first. As we get closer, I suddenly feel an urge to, urge beginning to overcome me. This isn't like last time. That's protective instinct something. Looks like we're here. So it would seem. We both kind of just stand still, not sure of what to do next. What do 
I do now? I guess you should be going inside soon. I won't want your parents to get worried. You're right. Even though she says this, neither one of us makes a move. Before you go, I was wondering about your walk with Monica. Poke. Does the poke it say this poke it say over his forehead? Feels different from the others. The spark of electricity gets sent through my body as as my fingers connect. I quickly withdraw my hand and try to repress my blush. <laughs> Don't tell me you're worrying about that again. I wasn't worrying, Meanie. I was just curious. Well, Miss Curious, all we did was walk to, to her house together. Nothing more, nothing less. I see. Come on, you don't think I would try and replace my walk home with Buddy. Not when it's someone as awesome as you. I smile at Sayori, who quickly returns it. Thanks, Killian. That means a lot to me. Of course, Sayori. Silence returns briefly as the mood turns a bit more somber. I probably should be heading inside. Me too. It's already pretty late. But hey, we'll see each other in the breakfast club tomorrow. I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. Me and Sayori give each other a quick hug before she gets inside. A few smiles spread across my face as, I'm beginning my, as I begin my trip home. And after... as I open the door. I kick off my shoes and start towards my room before I realize something. You know what? Freak it. I'm gonna eat dinner tonight. Yay! It's already pretty late and I haven't written poems yet. But I gotta break the cycle at some point. I begin my strategic breakdown of what would be the best food to eat. Hmm. Period, 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 period. My thinking eventually lands me with a frozen personal pizza. I take it out of the fridge and preheat the oven. The oven preheating and then cooking the pizza will give me plenty of time to write poems. Luckily, my backpack is next to the kitchen table from when I got home from school. <laughs> Removing several sheets of paper and a pen, I get down to business. I had to stop halfway through doing poems to put the pizza in the oven. But at last, I'm left with four masterpieces. Well, maybe not. I can't help but feel a little depressed as I read over the poems that I've written. I was in such a good mood when I wrote them. But they still came out just as dark as before. Maybe darker. I try not to think about it as I begin placing them in my folder. Before closing my folder, however, my eyes land on the poem I wrote for Yuri today. Stop! Why? 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 
Why? Why does it skip poems? I hate this game. Probably a good thing I didn't show this to her. Even though I had feelings for her when I wrote it, it still ended up being depressing. <sighs> oh well. No use fretting over it now. The timer on my phone goes off just as I finish saying this. So whenever anyone talks about poems, I need to turn off the auto. After I've had my mouth full of pizza, I've managed to burn every possible area in my mouth. I decide that's pro that it's probably time for bed. I toss my plate in the sink and make sure that the oven is off before making my ascent. I don't even bother flipping on the lights as I enter. This would normally be the time I think over the agenda and come up with a strategy for tomorrow. But my plans always fall apart anyway. And after today, I've earned a break. I plopped down into bed after stripping out of my uniform and began cuddling a pillow. After wishing Mr. Ceiling goodnight, I slowly fall unconscious. Alright. So. I'm gonna stop it there. Well, thank you for watching. Uh, this Doki Doki video. Um, in just any of my videos in general. Um,. But yeah, just thank you for watching, and I guess I'll see you later. Goodbye.